May God have mercy on us all. Welcome to the Alan Handelman Show, a variety of fascinating people from the international world of rock and roll to the conversational newsmakers and authors, from the great television and motion picture talents to the country's funniest comedians. Canada's one of those countries. You know what they give away? Health insurance! You never really know what's going to be happening, but we guarantee you a show people will be talking about tomorrow. Now, here's Alan. It's going to be a great three hours, and I'm so happy you're here tonight. You know, we haven't heard from rock star Carmine Apiece in three months. Actually, I take that back. About uh, six, seven weeks ago, I I did wonder what was going on because we didn't hear from him. And he texts me back that he almost died. A nosebleed. A situation he had to deal with uh, before, but this was an ordeal. He's finally talking about this. He's well enough to talk and... This is an update on Carmine Apiece. Wow, you've been through an ordeal. Tell tell everybody what happened, man. Good to have you you back. Basically, you know, uh, I had that surgery in October about the nosebleed, and I was supposed to be okay. And when I finished the last gig with Vinny in the Canary Islands, I walked on the stage, and I hit two notes, and I started bleeding. And uh, so I... I couldn't play. I ran backstage, and I was dealing with trying to stop the bloody nose, you know? Yeah. And then I was thinking about how the hell am I going to get home? And the ordeal to get home was unbelievable because uh, we we basically changed my flight to, uh, to give me a day's rest after that. And then me and Vinny, we bought a uh, business class ticket to, to go through Lisbon, which is a shorter route to get home. Mm-hmm. And... Uh, so we got on the Canary Island flight to Lisbon. That was good. And we got on the flight to the Canary Island from Lisbon to New York. And it was good. You know, we had the dinner and I was getting ready to watch a movie. And all of a sudden I started bleeding on the plane. I'm hemorrhaging bleeding. I mean, talking bad. Mm. So they had to land at the Azores, which is a little island in the middle of the Atlantic Ocean. So I can go into a hospital and... That hospital was was a horror hospital. The, the, the doctor there was a real asshole. Nobody spoke English. He was like, uh, <clears throat> they they didn't they don't practice medicine like here in America, but they try not to have the patient hurt. You know, he was doing things to me that were killing me. And at one point, I was screaming so heavy. Vinny, my brother, was with me, and he said I never heard anyone scream like that, and it scared the hell out of him. Oh my God. He, and then they put me under, and they packed my nose up with gauze. And I woke up in this very horribly dim room that was looked like I felt like I was in a horror movie. <clears throat> you know. And then luckily, Leslie was relentless and somehow got a medical airlift to get me out of there. So they took me to France to uh, an American hospital, supposedly. And they spoke a little better English, but they they were not good medically. They were all about their looks, you know, everybody dressed up nice. And the room was, uh, that I was in was like an HG remodeled room, you know, like TV, mm-hmm. you know. And uh, so then we had to get it out of there. So she got a miracle. She said it was a call from heaven. I got a second airlift back to New York. From France? From France, 13 hours in a little, like, Learjet with a medical team. By the time we did the third, you know, I had to land three times to refuel. In Newfoundland, we landed, and the flight from Newfoundland to New Jersey was, <clears throat> my um, f- temperature was up. I had fever, and blood pressure was up, and the medical team was worried about me. They didn't know why I had the fever, you know. And then when we got to New York, we found out why that uh, the gauze that the guy put in should have been taken out in a couple of days, but it was in there for five days and started an infection. This was at the Azores? uh, They put it at that hospital? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it started an infection in in that area of my nose. He said if I would have waited another day to come home, I would have come home in a box because the infection would have reached my brain. Unbelievable. My God. Now, Were you conscious during the whole time like on the plane? 
not semi. Uh, so like semi out of it, you know. Yeah. And when I when I was in the hospital in New York, I was hallucinating. You know, they had to tie me down. I was pulling out the catheter, pulling out the IVs, and even I don't even know where I was or who, <clears throat> who I was. My Until God! The day later, it was. Till the day later, when they gave me a, a hell of a lot of antibiotics. You know, he said they that. You know, the infection came that close to hitting my brain that they, they were worried that I might have been, you know, um, mentally disabled. But I was okay. How was Leslie so, able? Was Leslie able to do this from New York, or was she with you? Well, she was. She was in New York initially, and then when I went to Paris, she flew to Paris, and Vinny was with me in Paris, and Vinny flew back home. Right, and then she went back with me to New York in the uh, medical flight. I see. And she was on the phone constantly. I mean, she pulled off a miracle, and uh, I mean, you know, Jesus and God had to be with me. So I was praying to them and praying to really help me, especially in that hospital. Mm -hmm. You know. Yeah. And uh, it was it was the most unbelievable experience of my life. You know, and she really saved my life. You know, Leslie did. No doubt, no doubt. And let me ask you this: When you first went out on stage and you said, uh, it "Just in a little while, it just started bleeding," was there any warning? Do you get a sensation? Nope. nope. Oh, you just feel a, a trickle going down your nose, and I knew that feeling. I wiped my nose with my hand. I saw blood on it. I said, "Fuck, that's it." And I went backstage, and I backstage looked like a murder scene. There's blood all over the all over the bathroom, all over the towels on the floor. And eventually, Vinny had to throw away my clothes. You know, when we were in the Azores, because I, my clothes were full of blood. Wow! Now, in the, yeah, the, the did uh, is it is did the surgery not work, and this, <laughs> or was it something? No, from... no, no. When he did the surgery in in. Uh, in um, October, there was he, he took care of the main vein that was attached to the um, artery, but there was another piece of the vein that he didn't do because he said if he did it, there was a, a chance that I, I possibly would be able to uh, have a stroke or um, or I could lose my sight. Mm. So he didn't do that vein. Right. And that was the one that erupted. So he ended up having to do it, you know, but he had no choice. So he did it. So now that whole side of my uh, nose has been done. Do you notice you know, any so, difference since they... Oh, yeah, my nose is wrecked. Kidding me? It, uh, a nose doctor says it's going to take at least two two more months for my nose to come back to normal. Oh, now, but it I will got... come back. You just have to do some rehab or something. No, I just got to let it heal yeah you know pretty much just letting it heal and uh from letting it heal i um every day i'm doing um like uh two nasal washes and i have a steamer a facial steamer where you breathe in the steam i've been doing that three times a day and pretty much that's it he said i can play you know um, I, I started working out on the uh, treadmill and playing a little bit but you know i lost three uh a, a, a third of my blood so it's going to take a couple of months for that to come back so right. now when i play and i stand up i feel a little unbalanced you know right and my my blood pressure has been really low because i got less blood <laughs> are you home Mm-hmm. okay so you're home you're out um, of the hospital i heard i heard oh some... yeah i got out of the hospital like uh on uh, uh february uh, 2nd i heard some medical equipment in the background i heard beeps Sound like... No, no, that was my. I'm in the Maserati. <laughs> oh, okay. I thought that I heard. That was the uh, sensors. That was the sensors. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah. Man, oh man. So, how much of the uh, tour did you get? Most of the tour done before? I the... That was the last date. It was an amazing tour. Everything was going great. The label was into it. They were telling us this is only the beginning. We're really behind this. And matter of fact, uh, on the 16th, they're releasing a digital single of Sinister with a lyric video um, on the 16th. Mm -hmm. 
So with, with artwork, so when you buy the single, you get a piece of artwork to go with it, you know. And, uh, you know, so they're still behind it, but you know, we're going to play March 25th in New York here, you know. And uh, we were going to go back to Europe, but I'm not, I'm not leaving the country anymore. I don't, I don't ever want to take a chance of being caught like that again. So, but I got something else that's going on that's really big, and it's all just for America, you know. Because in America, you know, you have the hospitals, you know, they know what they're doing. Mm -hmm. You know, when you're when you're out there, you don't know what you're getting. Well, how, before we get to what you're, the big thing you were talking about, uh, are did that operation he just performed uh, keep you uh, at less risk for this happening? Yes. Again? Yes, he, he said that I should have, I have less of a chance of any bleeding now than I did in October. So he said the whole right side of your nose where the problem was is all sealed up now. And, and how about that risk, he said, for blindness or stroke? Well, or? I'm okay because he did the surgery already. Oh, okay. Okay, oh, this, yeah. the risk was if if the surgery didn't yeah, go well. Yeah, the risk well. was during the surgery. Yeah. I see, uh -huh. I see. Unbelievable. And, uh, me and Leslie are thinking of writing a book about it. Oh, God, man. I, when, it was I knew there was a dramatic, some... yeah. amazing story, you know, and I survived. How long were you with the Azores? I was there a day and a half of horror. And they just they just had no compassion? Or is it... No, they, no they, they, they were just a bit backwards. You know, like in America, you know, you go in... Like, for instance, they put a balloon in my nose, right? I did that and seen the cyanide. They deadened my nose. They put the balloon in. No pain. This guy just shoved the balloon in, you know, hurt like crazy. Then he ended up putting saline in it. It was hurt so much I started screaming. Oh, my and he God. he tried to look down, down my throat, almost threw up. I mean, you know, on the plane I was vomiting. I was vomiting blood and I was turning white, you know. Uh, and the, the, there was a doctor on the plane that told the pilot that if he don't land, that he's going to have a dead famous drummer on his plane. And that's not going to go over very well on, on the news, CNN and Fox News and all that. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so he landed in the Azores. It was beautiful there. I looked out the window once. It was gorgeous. It was like storybook. You know, it looked like storybook land, you know, like fantasy. Yeah, just I can't. The, I, the horror. The, the of hospital was horror. The, the, the hospital was horror. No horror. one spoke English. Oh my God! No, just one nurse spoke a little English, and, and Vinny was my mouthpiece because I was out of it. You yeah, know? I, was, I was. I was like out of it. You know. Jeez, man. Whoa! I knew something was up when I didn't hear from you, and you didn't respond. And, yep. and just something told me I had a gut feeling, and then eventually I, uh, I, I, I got a message from you. So wow, man, I'm yep. so yep. happy. This is a relief, but what a story! <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah, my nose isn't right yet. You know, it's it just it feels so sensitive and clogged up. And like last night, I didn't have a good night's sleep because I couldn't breathe good for some reason. It was a little clogged up. Uh, so. I know you that know. sensation to a slight degree. I I had uh, I had a deviated septum, and yeah, I had the sur yeah, so I, I had when the I had the surgery. It's all clogged up, and you breathe through your mouth and your mouth. Exactly, and it was it scary. Dries up, and it wakes you, and it wakes you up. You know, scary, so. very scary. But uh, but I'm sleeping better. You know, I've been to the nose doctor twice since the surgery, and he pulled a bunch of crap out. I'm due to go back on the, uh, March twentieth. You know, but I've been getting crap out myself with the nasal. Every time I do the nasal uh, wash, you know, a bunch of crap comes out. Right, you know? the saline stuff or whatever. Yeah. 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 yeah so did, that twice did the, the doctors say what they did at the Azores was wrong? I mean, no, actually, the guy said that he saved my life by by uh, by putting that gauze in there the way he did. He did a, a great packing job, but. But for some reason, uh, it got infected, you know? Yeah. And, and uh, what, what I'm told is, like, like I had packing like that done in uh, in L.A., but they must have had me on some antibiotics so it doesn't get infected. You know, this, these guys just packed it, and that was it. Yeah. And then I left. And then I left, and 
when I went to France, and all these guys, you know, they had the whole wrong idea of what to do, and it was, it was wrong. They wanted to cut my face open and, and go in surgically. Oh, and, and Leslie said, no, that's not how we deal with this. It's vascular. You need to do yeah. that. And no, that's not what we do here. So she said, I got to get him out of here. So, But they, they should have at least taken the packing out and repacked it, but they didn't. Oh. So I can see why you don't want to travel anymore around. No, uh, I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna go out of the country no more. The only place I'm gonna go is St. Martin, and I got. We're buying insurance. And in case of anything, we have a doctor down there that'll <coughs> sign off, and I can get a medical airlift back to New York. So, so <laughs> th- th- this is the last question on it. But I mean, now the chances of this happening is greatly reduced now, right? Well, yeah. According to the doctor. Okay. But, but I don't want to take any chances. Yeah. Yeah. No. I'm I'm stay in America. You know, I'm better off. You know, I was on, a, you know, so I'm supposed to have heart disease. I was on all this blood thinners, you know, aspirin and yeah. uh, flaxseed oil and this oil and myospan. And, and, you know, that didn't help. So I stopped taking all that stuff. And now I'm going to see the cardiologist Monday to talk about that because I'm, yeah, I would, I'm better off going into a hospital anywhere in the world having a heart attack than this nose thing because people know what to do with a heart attack. Right. This, yeah. Yeah. You know, but uh, this nose thing is like a, you know, alien to everybody. You know, took this guy all day to figure out he's got to pack my nose. In L.A., that's what they do immediately. Right. Yeah. In the emergency room, they put some cocaine in there and they pack your nose. Cocaine stops the bleeding and you're packed. You know, this guy was screwing around with balloons and, you know, and he had to knock me out to pack me. When I woke up, it was the most awful feeling waking up in a room that was dimly lit with one nurse in it with a little light. The rest of the room was dark. They wouldn't allow my brother in there, you know, and I woke up out of, you know, being knocked out by myself in this you know, I thought I was in hell. <laughs> you know? Oh, God. No TV, no phone, nothing. Nothing. Oh, no, there's nothing there. You know, I was in the emergency room, you know? Yeah. Yeah. And uh, when I woke up, I was in the recovery room. There's no one else in it. If you're just tuning in, this is Carmine, Carmine of Peace, who just went through a horrific experience, scary uh, you just, yeah. uh, this is the, the worst nightmare and, oh God. Anyway, so you're home. Well, you, we're the, home and we're, we're, we're going to, we're going to pitch it out and, and see if we can get a book deal for it because it, it you know, it, it is an amazing story. You know, when I heard everything that Leslie went through and my brother went through and, and from my aspect, from the three of us, it, you know, it, it ends up being a love story and ends up being a family love story. It ends up being a, horror story from my end and then it ends up having a happy ending and we made it home you know for people who uh don't have a leslie you know uh yeah the, the, well, oh. if i didn't have leslie i'd be i wouldn't be talking to you now. yeah oh man well she's amazing so uh you come through all this you you come up with some uh big plans for america yeah i can't announce it yet until it's announced okay that's cool okay, but it's something good that's so cool. it's a, I'm going to be playing with a rock and roll Hall of Fame group. Cool. That uh, has been around, and uh, I fit in perfectly. Well, I'll tell you what. We're going to play some Stick It, something from, not from, from. Uh, Sinister. Sinister. Play Sinister. Stick It. Oh. Play, now, Sinister, like I said, on March 16th, is going to have a digital single coming out with a digital artwork and a lyric video coming Sinister. out at the same time. Excellent. So, so let's play a little sinister. All right, man. I'm going to talk to you next week. Thanks for giving us all that uh, detail and having you to relive it. Okay, man. Thanks. I'll see you soon. I'll talk to you next, next week. week. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.